In this episode, we will be discussing constitutional morality and the concepts related to it. Let us begin with a brief introduction. According to Dr. Ambedkar, constitutional morality would mean effective coordination between conflicting interests of different people and the administrative cooperation to resolve them amicably without any confrontation amongst the various groups working for the realization of their ends at any cost. Constitutional morality has been regarded as a paramount reverence for the constitution. Constitutional morality provides a principled understanding of unfolding the work of governance. It specifies norms for institutions to survive and an expectation of behavior that will meet not just the text but the soul of the constitution as well. It also makes the governing institutions and representatives accountable. Constitutional morality is scarcely a new concept. It is written largely in the constitution itself, like in the section of fundamental rights, article 12 to 35, Directive Principle of State Policy, Article 36 to 51, Preamble and the Fundamental Duties. Looking at Elements of Constitutional Morality In practice, constitutional morality is evident in various well-established rights that emanate from the constitution and include among others rule of law, individual liberty, right to equality, preamble, freedom of choice and expression, social justice, due process of law, and procedure established by law. Now, let us see some of the Supreme Court's judgments and what are the views of the Supreme Court on constitutional morality. Constitutional morality is not limited only to following the constitutional provisions, literally, but is based on values like individual autonomy and liberty, equality without discrimination, recognition of identity with dignity, the right to privacy. Constitutional morality means adherence to the core principles of constitutional democracy. For example, in Supreme Court's Shabrimala verdict, religious freedom, gender equality and the right of women to worship guaranteed under Article 14, 21 and 25 of the Constitution was reinstated, which struck down the practice of banning entry of women of a certain age to the Shabrimala temple in Kerala as unconstitutional. Constitutional morality here went against social morality that discriminates against women based on biological reasons like menstruation. Similarly, if we look into other judgments by the Supreme Court, we can get ideas about constitutional morality like in case of Ananda Bharati case, the Supreme Court restricted the power of the parliament to violate the basic structure of the constitution. In the Nas Foundation case, Supreme Court opined that only constitutional morality and not public morality should prevail. In the Lieutenant Governor of Delhi case, the Supreme Court proclaimed constitutional morality as governing ideas that highlight the need to preserve the trust of people in the institution of democracy. In the Shabrimala case, the Supreme Court bypassed the doctrine of essentiality to uphold the constitutional morality. Now, let us discuss what is the significance of constitutional morality. Constitutional morality ensures the establishment of rule of law in the land while integrating the changing aspirations and ideals of the society. Constitutional morality as a governing ideal that highlights the need to preserve the trust of the people in institutions of democracy. As such, an ideal. It allows people to cooperate and coordinate to pursue constitutional aspirations that cannot be achieved single-handedly. 
constitutional morality can use laws and forms to impact and change the persisting social morality. For example, by abolishing the practice of sati by legislation, the right to dignity and life was passed on to the widows, which later on affected the perception of the practice in the society. Constitutional morality recognizes plurality and diversity in the society and tries to make individuals and communities in the society more inclusive in their functioning by constantly providing the scope for improvement and reforms. For example, in Naptej Singh Johar v. Union of India, the Supreme Court provided a framework to reaffirm the rights of LGBTQ and all gender non-conforming people to their dignity, life, liberty and identity. Shifting focus towards what are concerns related to constitutional morality. The biggest concern is that the term has not been clearly defined by the Supreme Court, which leaves the scope of its subjective interpretation by individual judges. This top-down approach to morality can affect the possibility of the organic emergence of the solutions to the persisting ethical problems in society. It violates the principle of separation of powers. It establishes judicial supremacy over parliamentary supremacy. It is against the very principle of the democratic government. It is claimed that the application of this doctrine amounts to judicial overreach and thereby pitting constitutional morality against societal or popular morality. Now we will understand why there is a need to uphold constitutional morality. The central elements of constitutional morality are freedom and self-restraint. Self-restraint is a precondition for maintaining freedom under a proper constitutional government. To uphold constitutional morality, constitutional methods must be used for achieving social and economic objectives. Commitment to the ideals and aspirations of the constitution. Awareness creation among the common public regarding their rights, which are protected by the constitution. Following the fundamental duties while exercising fundamental rights. Now, we will end our discussion on a positive note with a conclusion. Constitutional morality is a sentiment to be cultivated in the minds of responsible citizens. Upholding constitutional morality is not just the duty of the judiciary or the state, but also of individuals. The preamble of the constitution explicitly mentions the type of society we wish to establish and it is only through constitutional morality it can become a reality. The progressive and monumental precedents have been set up by the judiciary in the past few years, where this doctrine has been applied, especially in relation to the cases of gender justice, institutional propriety, social uplift, checking majoritarianism and such other evils. Towards the end, let's focus on some prelims based practice questions.
to watch our videos in Hindi, subscribe to our Hindi YouTube channel, Drishti IAS.